it's all stripped down, all the clamps are off of it now. So you're gonna take a really, I mean sharp, and you're gonna gently chisel off this as much as you can. You can see now all the majority of the materials removed. Uh, now we're going to go through the process of sanding it. Um, I'm going to start with 100 grit and then work my way up to eventually I'll go up to 180 grit. sand <clears throat> the whole sheet the whole entire sheet starting with I start with 100 grit and then I work up to 120 and then I'm gonna go to 180 and you got to make sure you sand the entire sheet or else you're gonna have mismatched sheens on the surface and you're, you'll see it especially if it's a if it's in the light on the you know the light shines on it on a, on a sideways you'll see everywhere where you didn't fully sand it. This is, this is just, I started sanding this with 120 just to get this side, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin it and I'm gonna work this area over here. So that's not touched yet, but if you, you can see the difference. This is sanded, this is not sanded. You can get it back to this finish if you really want to have like a high gloss. It's 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 more prone to um, you know getting imperfections on it once it's once you keep it that high gloss. If you leave a satin finish like 120 or 180 grit, it maintains that finish a lot nicer and easier. It's and then you can just sand it, you know, and call it good. But I don't even think you guys can probably even see where I can't even see it. There's the seam. So it, that's going to run I mean I, I I don't know I can't even I really can't even see it maybe you see a slight variance but I mean that's how that is exactly how your seams should look they shouldn't you shouldn't even be able to see them I mean unless you you know exactly where it was which I know where it was because I can I can see this. 
but it's nice and flush. All you have left to do now is actually take the piece, <clears throat> install it in the area you're going to be installing it, and I mean, I can do a video of installation. I've done a couple few ones of, you know, installing the baseboard. It's the same procedure, you know, bl big blobs of silicone on the wall and then press it in. And, and that's pretty much it. And this is the back wall for a shower. So when you do have them tight against each other, like in a shower installation, you want to leave an eighth inch gap from the sides of the walls because this stuff does expand and contract. So you want to give it some room to move. So if you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe. Thanks, guys. I just wanted to show a quick little, I, you know, so this is what a bad seam would look like when you didn't get it quite right. I just, I put this one together. I mean, you can see it. It's not, it's not horrible. I mean, honestly, it could be way worse, but. I mean, this one I just put together because I was trying to build this table. I'm eventually going to rip all this out. I'll rip this whole thing down. I'm going to use it for baseboards. But I had to build a big table um, in the meantime so I could build all this stuff. So there you go. That's, that's what a bad seam would look like. That's what a good seam looks like can't it doesn't look like anything I found out something pretty amazing I didn't even know something like that was even available I literally just have to set like an alarm for my truck and it just, I'll just walk out in the morning and it's it's all running I'm all good to go don't even have to start it anymore.